and welcome to another video from edubconversions.co.uk. My name is Kit and I want to talk you through one of these projects. It's one of those days in the workshop where we kind of came to assemble something and then I thought, you know what, let's just pause for a little bit and do a little quick video on what's gone into this part of the procedure because it's actually very interesting and there's lots of different components that have all come together to make this possible. And just like with a lot of the work that we do, once you've assembled it, and got it into the vehicle. You don't really want to get it back out again. And also it's quite hard to see what's gone into making that part work the way that it works so well. And that's quite annoying um, because we end up with something under there. It's like, actually, if you cared, you know, yeah, the car's quite nice, but in there is something really quite clever. So I'm taking the opportunity now to show you what is going on in front of me, other than the gubbins of, of bolts and washers to attach these things together. What we have here is a electric motor and a single speed reduction gearbox. This electric motor um, is an AC34. Uh, it's a motor from a company called HBVS over in the States. Um, this is actually one of the standards of motor that um, kind of took off the electric conversion industry. So Indy, our green camper, uh, she was first fitted with an AC51, which was the biggest um, motor that they could provide. Um, and it's an AC motor. Um, they're always about this kind of style. You'll have different faces on the front of it, um, and you'll normally recognize them because they're blue. Um, but they've been around for a very, very long time, and, and they're a pre pretty decent cost, and the controllers that go with them are really great because they're all canvas integrated, so you can get a lot of control from the canvas side um, of the uh, motor controllers, uh, which is really great for full integration to the rest of your vehicle. And what, I've gone down a rabbit hole in the motors, which is not what I'm here to talk about. Here, we have a single speed reduction gearbox, and this is one of uh, the new gearboxes that we're able to get our hands on um, at a pretty decent price. Until recently, if I wanted to go to a gearbox company and say, hey, we've got this idea, what can you make for us? They would cost about 20 grand just for a single kind of prototype version. Um, we can now get hold of these for let's just say a lot cheaper. <laughs> um, so it's a simple um, setup. Um, I believe it's a two to one box. Uh, so you've got your motor, which will turn the spline here on the inside face. It goes through a reducer inside the gearbox and then out of a prop shaft connection on the very back here. Um, so we have a prop shaft. This is all going into our Morris Minor conversion. Now you may have seen a few Morris Minor electric conversions already. They do exist on the interwebs. Feel free to have a look around. And the ones that we've seen so far are either Hyper 9 motors, um, which are kind of bigger, more modern versions. I won't say more modern. They're bigger versions of, of these motors. Um, they came out a lot more recently than the HBVS uh, units. So they, they're kind of all the rage at the moment. Um, I think mainly for their power. They're, they're, they're much higher powered than uh, what we were able to get out of the HBVS. But in a Morris Minor, I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, doesn't need power at all. Even a little bit more power would be lovely. It does not need that level of power. The other types of conversions you sometimes see in a Morris, um, I've seen a few Nissan Leaf conversions. Um, so they're quite cool. They, um, but most of them seem to use the original gearbox. So you're just doing electric um, motor. You're doing a battery box. Sometimes it's a split battery box front and back. Um, all of our batteries, we'll have another video on this very soon. All of our batteries are going in the front because it's a a kind of cargo van style Morris. So we want to make sure we've got as much weight allowance in the rear of the vehicle as possible. Plus it makes our installation a ton easier when you just got one battery box that sits in the very front and plonk, in it goes. Um, so what we have here um, is like I said, we've got the electric motor, which is driving from a, it's about a 96 volt nominal battery pack and driving through um, the single speed redu reduction gearbox down to the original differential and the rear wheels as well. Because again, we don't really want to touch much of that back there because it requires a major amount of uh, modification to the vehicle. The rear suspension um, and wheel uh, chassis on the rear of the vehicle is all one piece. So you can't really adapt some parts of it. You have to replace the whole thing. And we weren't going down that rabbit hole. So what we have here is, the, uh, is always that question of, well, how do we get these two things to stick together and to power each other? How do we cleverly get the power from that bit into that bit without causing any issues? And that's what you see in front of you here. So effectively, what we've got is two different plates that look something like this. So this has been designed on one face with countersunk bolts so that the bolts that are holding through it are flush on this face so it can sit flush against the motor or on the gearbox face. And then on the inside edge, you've got some recessed holes here which are mounted into these um, load-bearing uh, 
huge kind of spacer washers here as well. And those are effectively providing the rigidity and the stability that when they're all bolted together, these two units form one single piece. Um, and that's what's providing the strength between those places. Um, you'll also notice that on this face here, we've got some of this uh, cross-check lock check seal. Um, so again, it's a moving part. It's very high tensile. We want to make sure that the right kind of bolts and links that we're putting together on this section, that when they get tightened up and they get sealed, that they're not going to spin out um, and cause any issues in the future. Um, so that's why you've got these lovely little red dots um, all over our gearbox. Then you've got the bit in the center. So one of the big complications that we've got with these two units is that this piece of machinery comes from America. And so the bolts are on a UNC format, whereas we've got metric bolts on the gearbox on this side here. So that means that mating the two together has been a little bit of a translation issue. Um, so what you end up with is UNC bolts going into the center of the spline on the motor and into the uh, housing around the outside and onto the motor mounts that we're going to pick up off on the back but then you're adapting those as they go through into this piece here. So the actual connector piece in the center is, is this. This is really smart, because actually what we've managed to find is this is two pieces together. One side, in fact, I'll spin it the right way around for what we're looking at. This side here has got the splines, which are connecting onto the gearbox. Um, so that's just simply a spline fit. So you just push it on as long as it's got some uh, tension to hold the two together, that's gonna transfer the power really nicely from the other side of it. On this side, it's a key held um, piece. Now, we've had to manufacture this piece. So this piece, cleverly, was available off the shelf. So we managed to find that piece, get it shipped over to us here at EWHQ, and then we took the measurements off that to build this mounter on the far side as well. And what that, what's really great about that as well is that if we want to use the same single speed reduction gearbox as this in any future builds, which we almost definitely will, but maybe we want a different motor, maybe we do want a higher powered motor like the Hyper 9, or maybe even we want one of the Zonic motors, a high voltage motor so we can do rapid charging, then all we need to do is adapt this half um, of the coupling rather than the whole thing, which saves us a ton of money because um, that's very strong and very hard to mill. Um, so it costs a lot more than you'd expect it to. So the next step that we're gonna do is um, kind of push these two together and bolt them in so that they're nice and snug between the two. Obviously that's kind of a friction fit when it goes on. And then to protect it, if I can get my logo anywhere I will, um, we have these two plates um, that go around the housing like this that will keep the uh, section protected. And this is quite a curious piece because the rules are a bit gray about what you need to do to protect something like this that's spinning between two parts. On one side of the coin, you've got, you must keep all rotating pieces protected. But on the other side of the coin, there are a lot of things on a vehicle that rotate that aren't protected, like the four wheels on the corner of your vehicle. Um, and also things like the prop shaft, which is connecting to the back of the gearbox, going to the back of the vehicle. That's not protected. That's spinning pretty fast when it's traveling at speed under the vehicle between the gearbox and the rear differential. So we've taken what we think is a, is a pretty logical approach. So this will keep the um, spinning section of this connection enclosed. So it's not gonna A, be damaged by anything being kicked up off the road too much. And it's also to keep fingers out. So you couldn't, I mean, how would you? You'd have to be climbing under the vehicle. It's quite Scooby-Doo. You'd have to be climbing under the vehicle while at high speed and try and move fingers in. So the next step is we're gonna start bolting all this together. Um, keep an eye on our um, Instagram channel to see the updates of how that's going to be going. And like I said, there will be videos in the future to show you how the battery box is going to be coming together. Um, and that will give you some information about how something like this build, which is a reasonably straightforward build, is able to be put together um, so well by a company like us at EW Conversions. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then please let us know. This one's a little bit different from what you normally see, um, a bit more techy. But there's not a single vehicle <laughs> that you can see behind me, my lovely white wall. Please let us know what you think of the video, if you like this tech stuff or not. Um, share it with your friends, and please, as well, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so thanks again for watching, and we will see you really soon.